So I wanted to share something really interesting the Lord showed me this morning as I was in Proverbs. You know, I probably read through Proverbs like, I don't know, more times than I can count already, but it's like, there's so much in it that you always see something new, you know? And so I'm in Proverbs 11, and I'm going to read verse 3. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. And I'm going to skip over here to verse 6 now. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust. There's two ways, key ways that I learn from Proverbs. The first way is just taking it um, for what it says as good wisdom. And that includes breaking down words and, you know, word studying with Strong's Concordance, looking at the Hebrew and, and just taking it for what it says. The second way that I personally learn from Proverbs is by understanding that Solomon wrote a lot of these things and then fell victim to them himself is what is so intriguing to me. And, and, and I've looked into this, what the scholars think. The scholars believe that, that Proverbs was written prior to Solomon falling into so much trouble with his 700 plus wives and concubines. That's astounding when you think about it. Now, I personally believe that some of the first chapters of Proverbs that are specifically about women, they seem to me like they were written from a place of Solomon's experience with having fallen into so much trouble with women. I find it very hard to believe he would write the depths of what he did in those first several chapters of Proverbs. Uh, and then go do those exact things. That's me personally, but then again, at the same time, it's like maybe he did. And here's why maybe potentially he did. This chapter 11, I do believe, I do believe this is a proverb that was written before his troubles and his years that he fell away from God for different reasons. I'm not gonna go too far off into that. Um, but to me, it seems like he's writing this from a place of when he had been very faithful and or was in the process of being faithful to the vision God had given him as king to be a, the, the, the wisest possible ruler, to be for the people, for God's people, to benefit the kingdom, to build the temple of God. You know, I don't think it's a coincidence that that, that temple was built, that Solomon took that vision from God and stayed faithful. I mean, it was like a seven year process to build that massive temple. So I believe he's writing this from a place of where he's in the process of being faithful to that vision. But here's what I believe the Lord spoke to me. So Solomon was able to write this, that the integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. And that the righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaithful will be caught by their lust. So he understood this at the time of this writing, very likely in the midst of him being determined to stay faithful to the vision God had given him. But then what happened? That's what I believe happened. The temple got completed and Solomon experienced some degree of period of time, continued faithfulness to the God of Israel but then he lacked vision. He lacked vision from that point forward of the temple being completed. You know, I'm sure he experienced healthy relationship with the Lord the best he could under the old covenant once that temple was completed. Served God for some degree of time. But without vision, you perish. For lack of vision, my people perish. It's an Old Testament verse. And I believe Solomon just didn't have the eternal vision that he could have. This is how I know he didn't, actually. Ecclesiastes is pretty clear that it's written at the end of Solomon's life. Virtually all scholars agree on that, despite background. 
or denomination. And if you just read it as a believer for yourself, you can tell he's writing towards the end of his life. He's talking about everything he's experienced. And Ecclesiastes is a book you have to read with the understanding that Solomon was missing a very important piece of information. Some of the things he writes, you can tell he doesn't have an eternal perspective and he doesn't really have faith that God has prepared a place for us, as Jesus said while he was on the earth. You could tell Solomon actually just believed that our fate as followers of the God of the universe would be the same as people who didn't. He actually makes that exact statement. He says that the wicked and the righteous both go to the same place. And in the natural might seem that way that we all die. He didn't understand that when your spirit leaves this body, there's actually options of where you could go. And it's very intriguing to me that a man who was the wisest man to have ever lived at his time had not considered that God being who God is and his perfectly just nature and character would treat his followers the same as the wicked as Solomon would always refer to them the wicked and the unrighteous and I think it was a lack of the eternal vision the eternal perspective that caused Solomon to get into trouble in the first place I think that's exactly what caused him to start looking for his fulfillment in things on this earth because he had lost faith that there would be eternal fulfillment in God. This is where I see a parallel to how you can still get messed up today in your walk with God. If we're in it for the benefits that we can get from God in this life, then you'll get messed up whether you get them or not. You'll be messed up if you're believing God for being blessed radically in different ways in your life and it never happens because then you think well this wasn't all that then and you'll be messed up if you were just believing for those blessings in this life and then you get them and you had no eternal perspective both people both people on both ends of the spectrum who don't have the eternal perspective get messed up this person is mad at god and underwhelmed in their relationship with him because they're like well what's the point why am i even here if i can't get my blessing from god while i'm here this person gets messed up like Solomon did because he was the most blessed person in the natural realm to have ever lived. And he still fell away from intimacy with God. I mean, he literally, he let his wives set up idols in the temple that he had spent seven years building. He let his wives set up idols to Baal and Moloch. Guys that, that people sacrificed babies to. Now it doesn't, we, we don't have, um, specific verse in the word that says that babies were being sacrificed in the temple of God. I think that would have, I think Solomon would have been, God would have took him out if that had, had been the case. But I mean, it was bad. Just know it, it was, it was still bad. That's how bad it got for Solomon. That's how far he had gone from the Lord. There's only one way that happens. No eternal vision. Once the natural vision was accomplished for Solomon to build that glorious temple and, 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 and to be the wisest man on the planet. It's like, well, what? Yeah. he had everything at his fingertips. He had no eternal vision. We need eternal perspective. I want, my, I want to be blessed by the Lord in this life. Of course I do. But I am blessed by the Lord right now. I already am. I know he's going to increase me in, in the natural. You know, to the physical eyesight, people will say, wow, he's really blessed. But I'm already blessed now. You're already blessed now if you're in Christ. We're already blessed because we have that promise of eternal perfection. We need eternal vision. If we don't have eternal vision, then we'll end up just like Solomon was warning about. We will end up being caught by our lust. We will end up in perversity and unfaithfulness and it will destroy us. The only way we remain faithful and the only way we remain focused is with eternal vision. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. Perfection for all of eternity with the other people who believe that message and with the God of the universe himself. That right there is a vision worth living for.